Hello friends, and we are back for part two in this last day series. The present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living, rulers and statesmen, men who occupy positions of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all classes have their attention fixed upon the events taking place about us. They are watching the strained, restless relations that exist among the nations. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element, and they recognize that something great and decisive is about to take place, that the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis. So let's get into it. And the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verses 6 through 8 tells us, And ye shall hear of wars and of rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now I know what you are thinking. Brother John, we have always had these things. Why would these be so significant right now? Well, I will tell you why. Some of the things we are seeing now, almost every day, we used to rarely have happened 100 years ago. Just about every day, something new happens. And even I know this without even watching the news. Did you know we currently are in 58 wars around the globe right now and almost every single one of them isn't even talked about? And guess what? Trump has nothing to do with almost all of them. And how about famines? We have those everywhere it seems like right now. Pestilences. It seems like we have something new every year come out like the supposed flu that came out this past winter that killed thousands of people. I was blessed. I was out walking in frigid cold air quite often and caught it myself. I'm not blessed. I caught it. I'm blessed. I survived it. And don't get me started on earthquakes. Almost every one I hear about is so destructive. Listen, on average, the number of earthquakes globally we have daily is around 50. Do you know how many we have in the past 24 hours? 138. Now wrap your minds around that. By the time you watch this though, it'll be different. But can you imagine? Hey, there are only a few examples. What about the fires in California right now? Apparently, there were fire NATOs as powerful as EF3 twisters sending a man's vehicle 600 yards away. What about the volcanic eruptions across the globe? What about Hurricane Lane hitting Hawaii? A hurricane hasn't hit there in 25 years and this is the most powerful hurricane to ever come close to Hawaii. I can go on and on all day to list as long. Friends, things are taking place that have never been seen in this earth's history. Matthew chapter 24 verse 21 tells us, For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Are we not seeing the beginning of these tribulations already? These are only the beginning of sorrows, and you have seen nothing yet. Even now, Satan is at work in accidents and calamities by sea and by land in great conflagrations and fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms and tempests, floods and cyclones, tidal waves and earthquakes in every place. And in a thousand forms, Satan is exercising his power. You see, he sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress follow. He imparts to the air a deadly taint and thousands perish by pestilence. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Destruction will be upon both man and beast. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The haughty people do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitations thereof. Because why? Listen, Isaiah chapter 24 verse 5 tells us why. Because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, and have broken the everlasting covenant. 
There are two reasons why God allows Satan to work. It's either to punish or to test faith. A lot of people who claim they are Christian believe they don't have to go through last day tribulations. You see, that's not true, friends. Listen to the words of Jesus himself. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 45 tells us that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For example, we see Daniel in the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, and last but not least, the story of Job. Let's look at what he went through. Shall we? Job chapter 1 verses 14 through 19. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and only I am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the sword and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and are, they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Can you imagine going through that yourself? And Job was a man of God. And people honestly think they are exempt from such a tribulation that is about to touch down on planet earth like no other. These are the beginning of sorrows. If you know how a pregnancy works, then you'll know what I'm talking about. The closer the baby comes, the closer the contractions are. The contractions happening on this earth are much more intense and a lot more frequent than they were a hundred years ago. We are that close to the second coming of Christ. You see, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 through 6 says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober." Jesus is coming, friends. Will you be ready? Subscribe to my channel for more Bible-based videos. And this is John Tinsley with Everlasting Rock Ministries. And always remember, the truth never fails. God bless you.